it would have been True. fun. But, it's gotta uh, it's gotta be safe for the next pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and of course, all right, we got we got Blazing Boy versus Dark Falcon. Now, Blazing Boy playing the optimal the optimal Pythra skin because uh, you don't know which one he is because they both have the same outfit. Of course, That's, you don't have you don't go by their voice lines. Just they look the same. <laughs> they look exactly the same, dude. Okay, but anyway, we're getting into this right now, and yeah, so this is a matchup where probably we're not going to be seeing less Pyra, just because of the fact that, you know, Dark Falcon playing a Belmont is going to be really effective at walling her out. And honestly, he's doing a really great job of walling Mithra out as well. 89%, only 10% taken on himself. Okay, even more big damage here, 123 and looking for a way to close out this stock. Trying to get those tipper forward airs, back airs, but okay. Gets one right there, and now here comes the ledge trap, and there goes the ledge trap. That's going to be a really clean stock for uh, Dark Falcon as he starts off this loser 70s match with a, just, it feels like a burning grudge. <laughs> yeah, he's... He's hungry for that rematch that could be going on in Loser's Finals, and oh, oh he, uh, he's dead! No, he's gone. He's super gone. <laughs> Down smash to break shields. Okay, I mean, I'm not necessarily surprised, but I am uh, confused, I guess. <laughs> Listen, surprise and confusion are two very different emotions that are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, it just feels weird because I've seen Pyra break shield, just never with down smash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, down smash is relatively fast, right? Like, I feel like a lot of Pyra's big shield breaky options are fairly reactable. Yeah, it's uh... like for down smash because it's less so. Anyway. Okay, let's. We actually have a lead now. I, th th that that shield popping seems to have also popped Dark Falcon's ego, as all of a sudden he's struggling to figure out how he like it's it, what how he had played the first part of this game is like a distant memory. He's looking at his hands, being like, "What did what did I do? Who did I used to be?" Yeah, he must uh, be as must have found himself at a at one of these hotels in the background because it's, it's it's a far off dream. The for this game, but a dream he has almost made come true a couple of times. So not out of the woodwork quite yet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here's more of that Mithra action though. It is I like that air dodging up to that platform to avoid the ledge trapping that Belmonts are so, so famous for. And at this point, okay, we now have, I would not call this an even game, but it is a manageable game if you are Dark Falcon, especially considering the fact that you, uh, Ooh. Not the Down sweet spot, to... but oh, Ori, that was a that was a risk and a half that he certainly went for, and it I mean it hit and it hit twice. The scoop on that move is so so huge. Oh, he's getting away from that flame nova. He sees it, and he's just he double jumps away, wants nothing to do with it. Didn't get his shield broken that time. Okay, but that shield is getting smaller and smaller. I feel like that is an option that will soon no longer become available to him. Now it's refreshed, so yeah. doesn't have to worry about it quite as much. If there's any difference that I can see with the, the difference between Blazing Boys, uh, Pyra, Mithra, Aegis, and uh, and, jo and Jonathan's is that Blazing plays a whole lot more aggro he does a whole they're still playing pyra but you see a lot more double jumps you see a lot more uh of the flame nova a lot more of these like native risks being taken which is exactly what belmont wants you to do because if you get caught without your jump or jumping too much then that's gonna close out the curtains with a 144 percent sweet spot back air goodbye yeah even after that huge huge pickup from the shield break that killed at 50 in the end dark falcon just kept his head in the game and realized what his win condition was which was never let his opponent play the game your opponent can't win if they don't play the game <laughs> yeah he just he took his whip and he whipped the controller out of his opponent's hands <laughs> a 
but I mean, you're right. Like even with that first stock, like the first stock was so strong because he didn't let his, like he didn't, he didn't let them get off ledge. He didn't let them approach or do anything. The shield break kind of stymied that I that momentum a little bit, but it didn't completely remove it as he recovered very very well. Yep. And now we have game two on town. Uh, sorry, what am I talking about? On final destination. Okay, I can kind of see the uh, the the idea behind this, the approach. Definitely will be a lot easier to juggle um, a character like the Belmont. Really has bad air acceleration, as you said. So there isn't, besides Downer, there's not really a lot of ways he can still creep. Uh, but that being said, having FD means that with a good solid projectile wall, it's gonna be really hard for, uh, especially once he starts switching to Pyra to be actually able to uh, ooh, do damage. That was crazy interaction right there. The fact that, that that he had blocked the Holy Water meant that the hitbox affected both of them and they kind of ended up trading with it. Worked out a little bit for, uh, I'd say in Dark Falcon's, fav uh, Dark Falcon's favor here, as now he's in some stage control who gets put on the ledge once more though throwing that throwing that cross the other way to try and help with his recovery back this time though no cross to help him he's all oh, having to retreat off stage once more and following through with that that's actually going to be the stock for uh for the pyre here yeah it's such a like there's been a lot of layers to the ledge trap that blazing boy often goes for uh, when he gets the chance to I mean, shades of his uh, and shades of the character he has been playing throughout bracket. That being the piranha plant, because a very whose biggest strength is that uh, ledge trap. Uh, it is their ledge trapping, but this is a. It kind of showcases that the practice of a fundamental part of Smash really goes uh, goes across the entire roster if you have the patience to do so. And I mean, he's right. got a huge lead because of it. Yep. And at this point, Dark Falcon needs to be closing it out somehow. All right, gets the F tilt to do it, but now he's at 91%. Granted, we already saw it. He made a massive comeback in that game one. And so if he gets his same game plan going, then I see no reason why he not repeat that same success. But at this point, it seems that perhaps Blazing is becoming a little bit wise to his tricks. He's not getting ledge trapped quite in the same way, even when he is playing the Pyra. Okay, but... As it stands, he's managing to get more and more percent here. Not dying is the important thing. Even these strong, strong moves coming out from Pyra are not enough to actually do the deed just quite yet. Oh, he's shielding quite a bit. Actually, able to get all that damage. Up smash, almost taking the stock right there, but not quite enough. But 85%, there are lots of things that, at this point, Blazing needs to be scared of. Okay, that was a really, really risky blazing edge to go for it at such a uh, such a high positioning. But it's is that finally gonna do? No, that's still not gonna oh, do it. I, I I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> blazing edge lasting forever is finally gonna take that stock. But as Dark Falcon, you managed to do about 99%. So, at this point, yeah, trapped at the ledge. One more holy water combo could probably do it. Oh, but that rising revolt. Yeah. Gonna be getting him out of that bad situation. I was gonna mention, like, the combo, the combo starter that down air is for Belmonts can be really huge at, uh, at finding, like, cheeky ways to take early stocks, but it is also so punishable that I... I don't believe that Dark Falcon would go for something like that one unless it is like, really, really prompted to do so. He's a character. He's a player that takes a lot of time to set up, which is why I really feel like Mithra would still be doing better even in a ledge trap situation. Like Mithra's speed to overwhelm uh, Dark Falcon before they get anything set up, on top of having foresight, uh, doesn't break from full. But you got to be careful with uh, <laughs> with Blazing Boy's willingness to put throw out down smash sometimes. Okay, and once more trapped at the ledge here, 116% onto Dark Falcon. He has to be super duper wary of all of those strong hits that Pyra has, but 
If you're blazing, you also have to be respecting the heck out of what Belmont can do. Oh, going for another one of those Flame Novas. Not actually able to punish it, though. And now we have these two sort of trading shield blows back and forth. That back air going to be doing massive, massive damage and knockback, but not enough. Okay, that, that Holy Water doesn't actually get the, uh, get the combo going here. No more Blazing Edge, but not actually able to punish it. He's going to be going to the ledge once more. This is such a scary spot. He manages to thread the needle, get off the ledge, but only for an instant. He actually gets caught by the holy water that time around. And a beautifully placed axe is going to be finishing off that last game there. We're going to be moving into game three. This is best three out of five. But at this point, we do have a, uh, a bit of a narrative being set by Dark Falcon. It feels like he's down by a lot. A lot of the time, sometimes it's because of consistency play from Blazing's part. Sometimes it's because of a, you know, really cheeky stock, but so Blazing has not been able to seal the deal. He's not been able to actually end things and take a game for himself. Dark Falcon is too evasive and too consistent in those last hit situations. I'd like to point out as well that he could finish the game at 144% again. So literally deja vu. <laughs> Uh, like, it's just it's the magic number for him 12 times 12 you know who knows maybe it's a maybe it's lucky maybe it's fortunate it you gotta love it gotta love those squares like belmont's chin he's very he's very square jawed fella <laughs> oh and we got some square combos coming out go just going back and forth ping pong with the reverse hit of the cross I would call these combos polygonal, man. <laughs> they, they, they're like three, they're genuinely 4D object, 3D space. The way that he's able to just connect move after move, getting 76% really early on in this game and parrying, but that just, the, I don't even know the exact mechanics of Blazing Edge. So it just sends him so far away, even after he manages to shield the hit. Oh, that might be it. Oh, he doesn't go for up smash. He knows that it's not actually going to kill. The Belmonts are quite heavy. But as it stands... Oh, gets hit by the back end of the Providence Revolt. Sorry, Sorry. Just, I was listening to the song and it kind of took me out of it. It kind of sounds like Spongebob music low-key. But I think it's a Yoshi song, so like... I mean, Yoshi is basically the Spongebob of the Nintendo universe. You're not wrong. You're not Voiced wrong. Voiced by Tom Kenny. Oh my god. Oh, it's not. I'm oh. sorry. I can't lie to you like that. I, I, I knew you were going to believe me, and I'm so sorry. I 100% believed you. I know. I could have. I ah. Uh, if, if I didn't have an audience listening to me, I would have just doubled, tripled down on it. Just absolutely insisted that Yoshi is voiced by Tom Kenny. Oh my god. And you would have gone on the rest of your life genuinely believing it. Yeah, I wouldn't have looked it up. I was like, wow, that's oh, crazy. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> I mean, you trust me. I'm, I seem like a, like a reasonable guy. Why would I lie to you about something like that? It's such an obscure lie to go for, but hey. <laughs> anyway. Uh, just yeah, like these getting... obscure situations that Blazing Boy finds himself in near constantly. Like, he has the percent lead, but Dark Falcon's, like, positioning has been pristine every time he's allowed to control center. I feel like that should be a number one priority in Blazing Boy's mind. Not necessarily looking for the kill with big haymakers like that, but just being able to maintain center stage. Coming down with Danner will do that for you, though. <laughs> All right, okay, and now Dark Falcon actually back in his comfort zone because he has to make a comeback happen, which he's been doing consistently right there. A beautiful edge guard seen to fruition at the end with that nicely placed axe. And at this point, one stock apiece at this end. Uh, all Dark Falcon needs to do is take this last life, and he finds himself in loser's finals. But Blazing does not want to give it to him easily. But, oh, it seems that Dark Falcon is taking it for himself nonetheless. Okay. I think he still has the, yeah, that's, he still held on to that, uh, that Holy Water for the entire time. But God, that now... could have been such a risky situation, though, as Py Mithra does not snap to ledge if she's forced to throw out the hitbox. Which is, I guess, why we're seeing uh, Pyra using, uh, Pyra use for her uh, upbeat more more prominently because it does snap us. Thank you, Timothy O'Brien, for the follow. Hugely appreciated. Oh, 
And at this point, oh, the Dragon Ball Z moment. Both of them coming back to stage. Oh, man. The fact that there's 50% separating them and they got knocked like equivalent distances. Oh, is he dead? No, he's not quite yet. But, oh, 118%. I don't know if he's going to manage to get to 144 to win before he dies. Uh, okay. It could still be a multiple of 12, though. We'll have to see. No, it's not. The axe traveling so fast. Far. I mean, that's why you do it. That's why you um, you adjust its angle to head that extra distance. But look at the path this uh, <laughs> this a medieval weapon just just uh, takes after the forward air. Just woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah. So and as far. Pyra Mithra, you're kind of more limited. He held back for he jumped into it. Oh, he jumped into it. It's like just take me now. I mean, you certainly take those if you're Dark Falcon, right? And I can understand that. I mean, that's why you really do still have to switch very liberally, even off stage, as Pyra and Mithra, because Pyra has the be uh, Mithra has the better airspeed. But as I mentioned before, uh, Pyra has uh, the better uh, recovery upbeat. Like it has better magnet hands. It uh, it travels further vertically, and snaps to ledge more reliably. So if you're gonna, but if you're gonna be only using pirate to recover, eventually in a deep spot like that, you gotta burn your jump. Yeah, it was also, I think it was a wave bounce with the axe right there. Yeah, you can see the wave bounce. That was really cool. That was that was what you need to do in order to position it just perfectly. So we are gonna be having Dark Falcon taking a 3-0. Where now he has to face off against. Wait, who knocked him into losers?